Most people would think a big breath gets you more oxygen. Well, that's just not true. What Mateka highlighted from the physiology behind breathing was that over breathing, big breaths result in a depletion of the body's carbon dioxide levels, which then results in a reduction of delivery of oxygen from the blood into the cells. You mentioned carbon dioxide. I, I, I get the feeling that um, worries people. They, they think it's a, a terrible thing, carbon dioxide. We've been quite misled about the role of carbon dioxide. Had you asked me 25 years ago, uh, what was the importance of carbon dioxide? I'd have probably just said, well, it's a waste gas. We need oxygen and then we have to breathe the carbon dioxide out. In fact, the reality, if you study physiology and biochemistry and neurology, you will discover that carbon dioxide is an absolutely critical chemical in the body of humans, animals. In fact, it's critical for anything that's in life, things that are alive on the planet depend on a balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide. It's definitely not a waste gas. It's an end product gas, one could say. But before we breathe it out, we extensively use it. It's a critically important chemical, absolutely as important as oxygen because it is the chemical that facilitates our uptake of oxygen from the blood. What does that mean exactly? Uh, well, if you study something called the Bohr law, B-O-H-R, it's one of the laws of physiology that unless there's enough carbon dioxide present at a cellular level, unfortunately, the hemoglobin, which is carrying your oxygen from the lung and delivering it throughout the body to the cells, the haemoglobin will cling to the oxygen molecule until there's sufficient carbon dioxide, which becomes a catalyst for the release of that oxygen. It's very, the haemoglobin becomes sticky for the oxygen until there's enough carbon dioxide and then it releases the oxygen. Until there's enough carbon dioxide, you won't get enough oxygen. And if you just got somebody to acutely hyperventilate, massively overbreathe through their mouth, big breaths, noisy breaths. After some time, most people would feel very unpleasant and the most common thing they would feel would be dizziness, lightheadedness. And this would be not because of too much oxygen, which of course they're taking a lot of oxygen into the body, but unfortunately they're losing a massive amount of carbon dioxide and they can't get the oxygen from the blood into the cells. Why is it that taking too much oxygen into the body, i.e. taking too many deep breaths, why does that have a bad effect on the system? Well, as soon as you take in a big breath, you dilute the level of carbon dioxide in the lung for a start. When you breathe out a big breath, you drain the body of carbon dioxide. Now, if the body has a good level of carbon dioxide and breathing is managed and not too excessive, then there'll be a level of carbon dioxide sufficient in the body for optimal functioning of all the systems of the body because carbon dioxide is a major regulator of body functions. It, it regulates vessel tone, it regulates acid alkaline balance, it, it regulates the nervous system, the immune system, the cardiovascular system, the hormone system, and the digestive system. That's apart from the respiratory system. And then we breathe it out because it's an end product gas. When it's done its work. We breathe it out when we've used it extensively, correct. Right. I've been going to the doctor now for, for 69 years and he's never once mentioned carbon dioxide. Very interesting point. And uh, having taught this method to, I don't know, 40 or 50 doctors for their own health. My brother's a doctor, by the way. The person who sponsored my work visa in Hong Kong when I worked there quite often was a medical doctor. And they're somewhat 
probably confronted to realize that there's a, an important aspect of the physiology which is not being tested as a diagnostic procedure, and that is one's breathing pattern. And when they discover what a difference it makes to elevate the level of carbon dioxide, in a sense, it calls into question the approach of modern medicine that's been accepted, wherein one does not get one's breathing pattern measured. The lung function test applied to many people with breathing difficulties is, is definitely not a measurement of breathing pattern. It's in fact a very provocative test designed to provoke a reaction in hyperreactive airways. And it asks you to breathe completely the opposite of what natural breathing would be. You're, when you're at rest, you don't take big breaths. There's no need. You breathe very softly and gently. In the lung function test that many people would have heard of and many would have tried, you're asked to take a big breath and massively exhale as quickly and as much as you can in one breath. Well, that's simply completely inconsistent with what normal breathing is. It's the opposite end of the scale and you massively lose carbon dioxide. And then if you've got hyperreactive vessels, which an asthmatic may have, they'll tighten up and you can't breathe out very much. So it's not that the test doesn't measure anything, but it's a crude and very provocative test that's not even particularly accurate because there are asthmatics who develop ways of blowing a good peak flow or FEV1, in other words, on that test. And there are people with no asthma at all who blow a very bad one. So it's not even accurate, but it does tell the doctor something, but it's definitely not testing a breathing pattern and it's not measuring the level of carbon dioxide in your body, which by the way, is not so easy to measure because it exists in five different forms all over the body in different areas at different levels. So measuring it's not that simple, actually. When I um, visited the doctor, he might conceivably have asked me, was I short of breath? But I don't mm. think he'd ever asked me, am I breathing too much? The doctor may ask that question if you went into the doctor's office acutely hyperventilating. Acutely. Making a noise and acutely hyperventilating. But the doctor is not trained to recognize the kind of hyperventilation which Dr. Boteco identified as being present in everybody that has chronic illness, is hyperventilating in a chronic way 24 7 and sometimes much worse. When he did most of his research was a long time ago. What's changed in that period, in that 50 or so years, is our lifestyle. And from my observation, I've only been teaching Bateka for 23 years, but the change is extraordinary in what I see. What I see is people's breathing is massively deteriorating due to our lifestyle. Part of it is posture, part of it is food, part of it is exercise, part of it is digital technology, there are many things, and part of it is a, almost a propaganda that it's somehow good for us to breathe deeply. When, when one reads the physiology of breathing, there's simply not a shred of evidence that suggests that breathing any more deeply than the metabolic requirements of the body for the particular activity we're doing could be of any advantage. In fact, it's definitely a disadvantage because if you breathe more than the metabolic requirements for the activity you're doing, you will expel carbon dioxide faster than you make it and your body's level of carbon dioxide will drop. This causes compromise throughout the body. 